All right, today is the day that we are trying to get this shop in line. And again, it is stretching into week number two of trying to organize and redo things. In fact, the only thing I've got for video in the work side of things is fixing the bench that used to be in this shop. In fact, instead of trying to get rid of it, I have cut it down to size so that it'll fit in here, right over here. We're gonna take a look at doing that. That's the only thing we're gonna see for work. After we take a look at that, we're gonna come back here and we're gonna talk about the cars that I have built. I have uh, had a subscriber, well, I've had a few that have asked if there's other things that I've built before, other cars anyway. I've built a lot of things, but other other cars that I've built. And I was in the midst of this organizing and getting this shop ready for the new year and reorganizing, trying to streamline things in here. I came across a couple of pictures in a storage bin of a vehicle. And so I thought, hey, I should just dig around a little bit more, find some pictures. Now, through my life, I have never really been one to um, record the things I've done. Of course, back when I began this kind of thing, it was always you had to go buy some film and you only had a few pictures you could take and then had to get them developed and stuff like that. So it's just not like it is today where we just take pictures of everything. But I did come across a few pictures of things and we'll come back after this little video and look at some of those cars over to the workbench. So this bench is really about 48 inches wide and that is just a little too much. It's actually gonna extend out and be in an interference with the elevator as it comes down where I wanna put it in the other room. So need to cut off about 28 inches of it. So took the skill saw across the wood and then I have some cross bases in the steel I need to chop down. And then to separate the bottom out, got to cut the welds. This thing was kind of a tube and socket construction made out of the rotisserie that I originally built the full-size plug on. Um, repurposed that rotisserie into this good working table. Now I need to convert it from a table into just a bench, make it a bit narrower. So cut the welds, cut the cross bracing, have one little piece hanging up, got to fight it apart always seems to be that one little tiny thing that always hangs things out, doesn't it? But anyway, we will get it separated. Once it's apart, flip it over, cut off this cross brace that caused me so much trouble. And then we'll pull the screws on this thing, get the wood off. We don't need that piece of wood. We just need this one leg that's sticking up. And uh, cut the corners so they will be fitted right to the old side of the table. We'll be able to weld those corners in the end. But cut those pieces loose and now we're ready to uh, stand the leg up and attach it back to the original base but the base is a little bit too wide as well so chop it off now there is a cross brace there but we won't need that cross brace anymore because we are bringing the legs so close together that the leg bracing is already plenty stiff this table is going to hold way more than ever fit on top of it got the sockets all stuck back together Put some tack welds onto it to hold it together paint it up at least our welds and it's ready to come back in if you remember we had some bins against that wall we took those out and now we'll have this room to uh, work on maybe a little bit of storage but mostly just nice good working area that was not as exciting as building a supercar but we are doing some video as i'm trying to reorganize this thing with some other projects like i said Coming the first year, I think I have some really interesting videos that will be coming up. But we're going to talk, like I said, about the cars that I have built in the past. So as I go down this little trip down memory lane for myself in looking at some of these vehicles that I've built, um, I came across these old drawings. And yes, this is... Uh... And you're not going to be able to see these too well, but I'm just going to flip through this. This is... I will jump in and do this chronologically in just a moment, but we're going to look at these since I'm right here talking to you on the camera. This is um, part of a portfolio that I had put together to go and show investors when I wanted to build this car and go into the production business. And this was a, more of an expose of some of the mechanical aspects and how the car was going to get built. Like I said, very hard to try to videotape this. This is all on vellum, so you're seeing three drawings through the semi-translucent paper. And the paper is actually kind of getting a little hard and stiff from uh, 
30 plus years of sitting around. I also had some uh, color renderings and a model that I built and uh, we'll show you that model in a little bit here. Now though some of these pictures are really not very good scan from just small photographs but we're going to take a look at all those and I'll kind of give you a narration of in sequence of my life the first pictures I have of the first cars and on through. Now this of course is not an expose on everything I've done in the automotive world but like I said, just a few things that I've been able to find digging through a bin. Anyway, let's go take a look at that as well. I told you I would take you back and do this in chronological order. And this is about as early as it gets in my automotive career. As a 14 year old boy, I got this idea to create this vehicle and started building it from a chassis created out of a Corvair for the rear and a Volkswagen pan from the front. You use the Corvair engine, transaxle, and rear suspension, Volkswagen front suspension. That's why you can see there's kind of a long overhang in the back for the Corvair engine, being a rear engine car like a Porsche. And of course, I didn't really know what I was doing, had no guidance in this. And was just... So being as young as I was and not having any kind of a mentor or anybody teaching me what I could do in this, I just began, started doing what I could. As you can see, I also was up against the problem of believing that I couldn't use any kind of a windshield and had to have this glass all made from flat pieces of glass, which could be cut from DOT glass by the manufacturers at the time. Had no idea or even thought of the idea of using an existing windshield from something. So a lot of this car was designed around the base of using flat plane surfaces, mostly around the glass. And of course I built this um, without molds built the fiberglass right on top of the plaster and then just beat the plaster out from the backside and reinforced the fiberglass from the floor. Now in these pictures, you can see a little further along, I believe I'm about 17 years old in these pictures. And so maybe another year or so into the project, I actually had some paint on it and some other features and some glass in the side windows, but I don't have pictures of it further along any way that I could find at the moment. But this was my original attempt at building a car, the thing that got me into this whole world. But this was the venture that got me interested in building cars and thinking that I could become the next Tucker DeLorean and building my own car and becoming a manufacturer of such. So a few years later, I set out. And as you saw the little pictures I was thumbing through before, put myself a portfolio together and went out, tried to raise money to build a prototype. Now these pictures are a picture of the model that I created to go along with my little presentation. And in this picture, you can see this model photograph photoshopped. I guess there wasn't much of Photoshop back then, but just composited together by sticking a picture on top of a picture and re-photographing it. And that was, like I said, my portfolio. I wish I'd had some of the renderings I'd done of this, but they did not survive as well as those vellum drawings we just thumbed through. And as that did not go off, and I'm kind of glad it didn't because I wasn't quite ready to jump into that world. But somewhere along that time, about 1989, I believe, I started building this car. And I did have one time, I know I had pictures of it when the plaster had been completed on this. But this was spurred by the Ford Probe. It was a concept vehicle that was really way ahead of its time. And even the secondary concepts the years later were even more interesting. And it looked like Ford was going to produce this car. And it was pretty exciting to see them produce something so sleek and futuristic. Sadly to say, the Ford Probe that actually came to market was nothing nearly as exciting as that. But this was an aerodynamic study of following that kind of trend, that super slick aerodynamic work of what Ford was trying to do with the probe. That was scrapped at that stage, though, never went past the plaster model, as many of my projects didn't do. But then years later, about 1998, I got this hair. The Hummer, of course, was the, all the rage at the time. And I thought I would kind of jump on board with that and had this idea to build a Hummer look like I didn't want it to look exactly like the Hummer, but be follow that same styling of the four door wide stance truck utilitarian vehicle. And so I decided I was going to build this vehicle and make it out of steel 
so that others could easily duplicate it, just create the patterns and the plans. Somebody could buy the plans from me and go ahead and build their own. Now here it is uh, in the midst of construction. Don't have too many pictures of, like I said, anything way back then, but this is it in construction. I had to do this on borrowed shop space, borrowed welders, borrow just about everything to get this accomplished. Here it is in a very good friend's uh, shop. That friend's still around helping me with car projects, helping me solve problems and uh, guide me in the right directions. And that, of course, I do have a few good pictures of that once it was finished because I was trying to sell the plans. Here it is showing it with the, the back off, the top removed, or at least the back section did. Had a rack that could go on top of it. It was kind of reconfigurable in a little bit of ways. And finally, a front picture with the beautiful, lovely wife beside it. There was plans briefly after that to take it to another stage, redesign the hood, maybe even make it a little more aggressive. But about that time, I sold it and bought myself a Unimog, uh, an old 404, which was very slow. But I had the dreams of turning it into this camper motorhome, maybe something akin to the rendering you see to the left. Now, it's important if you remember that rendering on the left, we will revisit that in the future. But I didn't get to do that, sold the Unimog as well, and made a little bit of move about that time. And one day my daughter, she was at driving age by that time, came across this Datsun 280Z that had some pretty bad front end damage, but it was running. And so we decided that uh, we could fix the front end damage by just getting rid of it and doing something new and unique. And so I built this front end, just like I said, one of those things I just come across in those digging through the pictures, thought you might be interested in seeing what I did here. I've talked with some of those in the comments about um, the process of building a car out of uh, without any molds, just you in a moldless construction, building thin fiberglass, then taking the form out from underneath it and reinforcing the inside. And that's how this was done. Anyway, later on, I started building another car and I do not have pictures of the construction of it. And it only got through the plaster stage, but this is a rendering I did of that car. I was uh, in an office and doing architectural work, but about this time, the crash of 2009 started coming on and I had to get out of that office and try to reduce my expenses by not having to pay the rent. And that car was actually being built in one of the rooms of that office. And so I had to get it out. The only way to do that was to destroy it. But a few years later, about 2012, Another child, uh, my youngest son, was getting a little older, interested in cars, and we kind of thought we would build a car together. And I did this rendering, kind of working out what he would like in a car. And this became kind of a extreme cab forward design. And we did push that through and built a plaster model of it. But that plaster model suffered the same fate as every other one before. Sometimes these things I knew that they might not go forward. This one, I really thought I was going to actually push forward and build. But this one suffered the same fate of having to make a move. And these things are kind of hard to transport without wheels on them. They get kind of heavy after a while. And well, it was scrapped as well. But that was okay because the next move came to where I am located now. And now we've moved on to the Arate project. There you are, a little more expose on my life, and maybe you're getting tired of hearing about my life and want to get back to the videos of building the Arate or other things associated with it. And I guarantee you those things are coming up, that this reorganizing the shop, although it's taken me even longer than I thought it would, is really key in me being able to function and produce more material from the production of more work. That's what we have for you today. Thanks for stopping by and come back. See us again.